If there's one thing that Psyonix has done since Rocket League went free to play, it's release new cars. But here's the thing, it's not really working. Well, at least not for the player base. See, it is working for someone and that someone is Psyonix and Epic Games because every time you see a car that includes some sort of massive company, whether it's a movie or some other brand deal, not like the Fennec or the Octane or the Takumi, I'm talking things like the McLaren or the Mustang or NASCAR or IndyCar, or Formula One, Fast and the Furious, Jurassic Park, all these cars are being designed and released for one simple reason and that reason is money. And that's okay, I completely understand that. This is advertising for these companies in the one car video game that people actually give a crap about. So it makes sense. But Psyonix is selling out for money. Speaking of which, today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Now I'm really excited because Raycon just sent me these headphones and they are flipping awesome. Like I absolutely love them. And you know who's really excited? My wife. Because we've bought a bunch of cheap crappy headphones and when she found out that I was getting sponsored by Raycon, she was super excited. And yeah, we just got them in the mail, tried them out. They're amazing. They're so clear and they just fit so well in your ears. Now the great thing is they're really affordable and if you guys want to check them out there is a link in the description below for you to check them out for me having a pair of headphones that really works well especially for what I like to do is so important and for me specifically having a pair of headphones like this is awesome because I love to listen to podcasts while I work out but also I like to go hike this mountain nearby where we live and having a good pair of headphones for that is so awesome because it makes it so much more enjoyable to be able to actually just stick them in there and they actually stay there versus things that are falling out or dying right away. These are so usable because they have all of the stuff that an expensive premium audio like brand would have for headphones, except they're basically half the price. They have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing. They have a lot of bass, which is really nice, unlike a lot of cheap headphones. And they're super just like compact and comfortable and they're noise isolating, like they're just awesome. There's a bunch of different like really cool colors and patterns if you guys wanna check them out. So click on the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash floomp to get your headphones for 15% off. So they're already affordable, this makes them even more affordable. Check them out again in the link in the description below. I know you guys are gonna like these. All right, now the problem, like I was saying with all of these cars, is that the Rocket League cars that come out aren't actually different. And we've gotten to a place where there's so many cars in Rocket League, people just sort of default to using what everybody else is using. So today I'm highlighting the worst cars ever to be released by Psyonix. Maybe when I'm not feeling so negative, we'll attempt to do the best, but for some reason, I'm feeling negative, so we're gonna make it the worst. All right, the first car on our list is a car I've actually used, I'm not saying I haven't used all the cars on this list, chill out, but yeah, this car's bad, even though a lot of people use it. First off, I'm not a McLaren guy, like in general, so I'm not sucked in by the allure of having this beautiful piece of automotive art. If it had been a Ferrari, okay, that had been another story, or if they were to ever add motorcycles and you give me an MV Agusta Super Veloce in Rocket League, boom, I'll be happy. The McLaren really encapsulates one important idea that we have to grasp before we move forward, and that's the simple fact that good-looking real cars suck in Rocket League. Hypercars, supercars, luxury cars, they all suck. The McLaren looks like it'll be nice, but then you get in the game and you see it from behind and you flip and you dodge and you flip reset and you do your ceiling shots and it just feels like you're playing Rocket League with a pancake. But you know the cars that do feel good? They're the ones that aren't real cars. The Octane, the old Batmobile, which I guess is a real car, but not really. The Fennec. These are not real cars. <laughs> They're not real in the real world and nobody drives them, but they just feel right in Rocket League. The McLaren? No, the McLaren sucks. Number nine goes to the Twin Mill. Ah, the Twin Mill. What is this thing? <laughs> and why does it feel like it's 17 feet long? The only hesitation from putting the Twin Mill higher up on the list is the fact that Kev Pert used it for a little while, so I'll respect it a bit. Oh, and John Sandman once used it for a thumbnail. And then I went ahead and fixed his thumbnail. See, the Twin Mill is bad for multiple reasons. It looks bad from every angle. At least the McLaren looks good from some angles. This car does not have a good side. Like if it were taking a photo, and the photographer asked it what's its good side, it would be like, hmm, I don't have a good side. And especially from the back. If a Rocket League car does not look good from the back, it doesn't look good at all. More than anything though, it's the tip. You gotta have the tip right. And this car's tip is all wrong. See, a Rocket League car is actually a box literally a hitbox. So when you shape a car like this, everything just feels weird, almost as wrong as my tweet I'd mentioned earlier. Like it's just not right. So if the end of the car has no squareness to it at all, it will feel weird. It will feel weird interacting with the ball. Again, because the car is actually a box. Number eight on my list goes to the battle bus. First, 
How dare they bring Fortnite into Rocket League? I know it was like a brilliant cross like promotion. I don't care that this coincided with Rocket League going free to play and ultimately stealing a bunch of players from Fortnite. Nobody wants this thing. Like seriously, how many players use this card? Just a show of hands, just put your hands up right now. Literally none of you are raising your hands. The Battle Bus is a stout little version of the Merc. It just simply doesn't have the charisma that the Merc has. Like it doesn't have that character that you want in a car. It does however have the Merc hitbox, a solid square, thick hitbox, but the problem is it feels smaller, like it doesn't feel as big as the Merc, and thus it just feels like a crappy Merc. Also, Fortnite, okay? We don't we don't need that. Number seven goes to the Guardian. This car fully represents my problem with the current state of Rocket League and specifically updates to Rocket League. So this car looks cool. It really does. It has that sort of hypercar, supercar, whatever look, somewhat like the newer Corvettes are, you know, doing. They're trying to compete with the Lamborghinis. But as much as this car looks good from the front, there's really never situations where you're looking at the front of your car. Well, I guess if you're in ball cam and you turn around, but who does that, am I right? Like, that's just too disorienting. You gotta just keep it in car cam. The Guardian and its different iterations were a part of the Rocket Pass, and I think this one stood out to me as a really bad car because it was the same thing again as pretty much the first two Rocket Pass cars. Yeah, they're new and they're a little different, but they're all the same. They're all sports cars. Yeah, some are a bit more extreme like the Guardian, but they feel too much like sort of concept cars that an actual like car manufacturer would release. What I want is something totally unique to Rocket League. I don't want it to look like a hypercar. I don't want it to look like an Audi or an Acura. I want it to look like a Rocket League car, the way things like the Fennec or the Octane do. And maybe even more importantly, I want it to look like it's hitbox. And these cars just don't. Number six goes to the 89 Batmobile, not simply because this is just categorically an ugly car, Car, but also because it just doesn't work as a Rocket League car. Much like the Twin Mill, the 89 Batmobile feels too long and it's just not girthy enough. Like length is great, it is important, but girth is important too, especially for a Rocket League car. These long, thin cars have you feeling like you're hitting the ball with a 2x6, literally. It just feels like the only shot you can hit is a slap shot. Plus, the icing on the cake, you can't even make this car look cool because of all the copyright crap with Batman and I guess it's DC? I don't know, does DC own this? Anyways, it's just this ugly thing that you can't even make less ugly and it sucks at hitting balls. Speaking of cars that you can't customize, how about the red and blue Jurassic Jeep? Now I will give it to Rocket League, the Jurassic Park cars have the single best trailer in video game history besides every single League of Legends trailer. Regardless, I was pretty hyped for this, but again, for some reason, these real life cars just feel so weird in Rocket League. This one is pretty square, so I do like that, but it feels tiny. Like it just feels like, like a small fries from McDonald's. Like you, just, you don't get a small fries. It's just not enough. I actually made a video reviewing the Jurassic Jeep when it first came out, and then I never used it again. Number four goes to the Triton. Now the Triton operates in another dimension when it comes to Rocket League cars. It is without a doubt one of the ugliest cars Rocket League has ever released. It could literally have 25% more power than other cars and dodge faster and hold like two times as much boost, and I'm pretty sure nobody would use it. The counterpart to this car is the Proteus, arguably just as ugly, but for me, the Triton really stands out. It's curvy sides, it's sort of crab-like shape. It's just overall aesthetic is akin to something like the Suzuki Hayabusa. It's just bad. Number three goes to a car that was literally broken when it came out, and that is the Aftershock. Based on the original Aftershock car from its predecessor, supersonic, acrobatic, whatever, whatever, the Aftershock had a fair amount of hype around it, but here's the problem. Adding a plane noise to Rocket League apparently like breaks the game. This glitch was essentially a deafening noise for other players on the pitch. Your car would just send out like 300 decibel sounds to other people, akin to a literal airplane taking off like three inches from your ear. But aside from that, the car is ugly, heavy, cumbersome, and it gets terrible gas mileage. Number two on my list is the Grog. Now the Grog is its own kind of special. The Grog came out at a time when Psyonix was actually taking risks with their car designs, so in a sense I can respect this. But what the actual poop sickles is this thing? The Grog has what I call a punchable hitbox or a punchable face, whatever. I even did a poll on Twitter just to prove my point, and the results of this were actually pretty enlightening. People agreed that the Grog is a pretty bad car. All right, number one on my list goes to a car that has been sucking for quite a long time. That's right, the OG horrible Rocket League battle car, the Hotshot. What the actual cheese curds is this? 
Is it an old car? Is it a new car? Why is it called the hot shot? It's not hot and it literally can't make shots. And I'm not kidding about that. I and the entire Rocket League community can attest to the fact that the hot shot is broken. I know Psyonix would probably deny this, but I swear this car is broken and it's never actually worked right. Watch me try to score a simple goal with the hot shot. Just watch this. Ooh. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let us know down below in your experience what you think is the worst car in Rocket League history. Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more dumb videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace out.